you're taking something that you had a skill uh, about, you know, you're, cause you were gonna be an architect, so obviously you could draw. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you had to have some kind of a passion for it. And you said, maybe there's a, you know, some demand for this out there and you went and tested it and it cost you almost nothing to go test it. That's right. Right, and, and you saw results right away. And you kept asking questions, you know, that kept, you know, leading you to higher and higher ground. So uh, I think what happens a lot of times is that maybe people are, and tell me if this is your experience, but maybe people say, hey, you know, I do have a talent and something I'd love to do, but I just don't believe that I can make money doing this. Or maybe it's something from their mothers, fathers, teachers, preachers, you know, told them that, you know, no, you have to go get a job, work in a company, you know, climb a ladder, get benefits. Oh my God, if, you don't, if you're an entrepreneur, if you go to do something on your own, you're not gonna have benefits. How are you gonna live without benefits? Right, right. right? So, yeah. so what, what is the, the barrier, do you think, is the biggest barrier that, entre that potential entrepreneurs face trying to get into a market, you know, get into making a job for themselves? Uh, our biggest barrier by far is our own mindset, I yeah. mean, for, for, by far. And I'll give you an example of shifting mindset. So uh, my son, when he was 16 years old, he had to do a class project as it was everyone else in the class. And you had mm -hmm. to present the project at the end of the year. And he decided that because he had a very mathematical mind and we had gone on trips to Italy where he had learned all about the golden ratio and the beauty and all mm -hmm. of that. And he said, you know, math has got a basis in beauty. So he decided that what he was going to do was he was going to create a series of building blocks called the Fibonacci blocks. Mm -hmm. And the whole co concept of Fibonacci blocks was it was taking it off someone called Frederick Frubel, who was like the founder of the kindergarten, who said like kids think spatially and he had this like wooden block set that he created. So he took that same concept of wooden block set, but he designed them all in the dimensions of the Fibonacci series. And he went out looking for how he could get this done in Bali, because that's mm -hmm. where we're living. And he came to me and he said, how do I know if this is even worthwhile? And I said, the way you know if something's worthwhile is people are willing to buy it, right? Mm -hmm. If something's actually got something that people say, that's of enough value to me, that I'm willing to actually pass you money for that thing, you're on the right track. So why don't you turn this into a crowdfunding project? Uh, and he thought, well, that's interesting. Now, he actually set up an Indiegogo campaign mm -hmm. where he actually put on there his Fibonacci blocks. This was before he had even had them produced yet. And that was the, the barrier. It's like, well, how do I actually get the resources to be able to make these blocks? Right. But by putting it on there, he started seeing all these people getting really excited about the idea of having their blocks. They started actually paying money in to this bank account that he saw go to $1,000, then $5,000, then $10,000, then $20,000. Wow. And this was all within a matter of weeks. And as he saw this growing, he was like, wow, I'm going to have to scale up my production here. And, but it allowed him to now have the resources that before he didn't have as a result of showing the value first. Um, it actually got to a point where he came back one day and he says, hey, I've been updating my teacher on what's been happening with this project, but my teacher was really enthusiastic to begin with. And now, like the last thing she said is, you know, stop showing off. She, and, and I don't know why she's saying that. And so I sat him down and I said, well, well, you've seen where your numbers have just gone to. You've just gone over $20,000 within like a matter of like 10 days. Do you know how much the average teacher makes in a year? <laughs> And he's like, $20,000? And I go, pretty much, mm -hmm. right here in Bali, that's what they're getting. And, and that teacher isn't gonna understand how you just made as much money in a classroom project within a week and a half that she makes an entire year. Mm -hmm. uh, and once he got that, and he realized that it wasn't his problem that she was feeling that way or others were feeling that way, he continued on. And that project went over 40,000 US dollars before it was wow. done. Wow. And he turned that into his own little business off the back of it. Uh, but that mindset shift was just that idea of saying, well, what if instead of me waiting for the resources before I go forward, or instead of complaining about the, the fact I don't have things, what if I turn it all around and said, whatever value I have, I want to share that with people mm -hmm. to see if they see value in it as well. And if they do, and they're paying for it, I, I really believe that every kid should have a, a crowdfunding campaign just to test this concept before mm -hmm. they leave school, because right. it is about that shift in mindset. Once you've had that one thought, mm -hmm. you're always going to be able to actually go and repeat it again at a larger and larger scale. And that is the free market, right? I mean, that's what capitalism is all about, saying, you know, somebody produces something and the market decides if it has value or not, and nobody can force anything upon anybody else. It's free exchange. I really believe that entrepreneurship is one of the very, very best ways to get to self-awareness. Mm -hmm. I think it's really easy to be in a job or to be in a situation where you're not actually getting the, re the mirror reflection of yourself mm -hmm. uh, in the same way you do as an entrepreneur, where, where if you don't have something of value, it becomes really clear really quick because no one's paying you money for it, right? Yeah. Uh, but the moment you do have something of value, you know it. And the, and the market gives you direct feedback, especially today where everything's online, where everyone can find the things mm -hmm. they like very quickly and move away from things they don't like. 
Uh, so your ability to every day get another lesson in self-awareness, whether it's a hard lesson or whether it's one that puts money in your pocket, right? Which is why I say as an entrepreneur, you're always either earning or learning. That's a brilliant insight uh, to say that being an entrepreneur is a path to self-awareness, right? So that's sort of this more spiritual side saying, you know, how am I going to get to know myself, understand who I really am, what, what really matters to me. Mm. And when you're working nine to five, you know, in a the confines of a, of a job that you have maybe just because you need to survive as right. compared to saying, hmm, how would I express myself and what would people pay me for that? You know, that's, it's really two different things. And, and it goes very deep because like we have so many frameworks within the things that I teach, which are based on self-awareness and self-mastery. Mm -hmm. I, I believe entrepreneurship and this whole idea of raising consciousness comes from three, three things, self-awareness, then self-mastery, then self-expression, right? Mm -hmm. And you can only get to self-expression, which is where all the money gets made, if you've actually got clear and self-awareness first. Mm -hmm. So as an example, the Japanese have this concept which is called ikigai, mm -hmm. uh, which is your reason for being. Mm -hmm. And it's, not, it's more than just purpose on its own. It's the combination of what you love, which uh -huh. is your passions, what the world needs, which is your purpose, mm -hmm what you're good at, which is your talents, and then what you get paid for, which is your business model. Mm -hmm. And it's the intersection of all four, because you can do something that can pay you really, I mean, there's people have a job or their mm -hmm. life and they go, well, I'm getting paid well, so I gotta stay in this job. But it's, it's not their passion, uh, which means that they're actually getting into poor health because of it, they're losing energy because of it. Uh, it's not their purpose, which means it's meaningless, it's not something which actually drives them. So it's about how do you really every day with the business that you start, make sure that to begin with, you've got a way to ensure you really are passionate about it, so you're energized every day, that you've got something that's purposeful, which means that you're gonna be doing it even in the tough times, that it's something that's following your talents, which allows you to build a team of other people who've got different talents, then the business model will always be there for you because mm -hmm. there's always, whatever you're gonna do, someone else in the world who has got very much the same purpose, talents, and passions, but has figured out a way to already be making 10 times what you're making, mm -hmm. right? And so by just understanding and learning from them, there's always a way to be able to make the money uh, most people just aren't thinking that way, which is why they're then trapped in their own mindset.